Good afternoon, sir. All right. Remember, the exam will be on Monday, based on your timetable, you're going to uh, visit school to collect the exam papers. You're going to do the exam and you're going to return those papers. I see on the schedule on by the 22nd. Now, if you can do the exam before and submit it, so they said it well. Let us go with the school calendar. They said the 22nd. That's when you should bring it in. I would have preferred even Friday the 18th. I could mark it over the weekend, but because grades due the following week. Anyway. So the would you be able to finish the paper? If you get the paper on the Monday, you'd be able to bring it in on the Friday by the 18th? Are you sticking with the 22nd? Hello, speak to Miss students. Sir? Sir, as you said before, um, if we would, if we submit the paper before the due date, that's on the timetable. Um, I don't it think might that... be a problem. Yes, me. Yes, sir. So what about your parents? Your parents can drop the paper. Sir, they could, you know, it's just the the persons who are going to collect it because they're going to say this is not the due date for the paper, and they'd probably send you back because they were told that this is a specific date. Okay, all right, on the 22nd. Yes, so, sir. 22nd is it? So, you'll get the paper. Remember, you have to use the peel approach. Don't write P E L L, peel. I must clearly see the peel, but do not peel P E L L in answering the question. You can P E L L on, the, on a blank paper, but write it in the format in which an SF short, short SF format. All right, ladies, so let us get oh, into- Excuse me, sir. Go ahead. Yes, sir, to remind you Monday to, um, that, um, it, yeah, to ask you to send the exam to my email, but I'm not sure if you meant this Monday or next Monday. Next Monday. Okay, yes, sir. When everybody gets in it, you just send me an email. Send me yes, an email, sir. not in an email, send me a WhatsApp message. Okay, yes, sir. Yeah. And I will send the paper to you. All right, ladies. So this is what we have we're going to do today. Uh we're going to look at two rebellions, slave resist rebellion, two slave rebellions. But I want, this is a timeline that I want to, want to use. So in 1670, we had the sugar revolution in the Caribbean and the sugar revolution led to what? What, led, what happened? What changed as a result of the sugar revolution? What changed as a result of the sugar revolution? What were some of the changes in the Caribbean as a result of the sugar revolution? Um, sir, one of the changes is that they needed more workers. So I think Bar I think Brazil was one of the first to import slaves to their country. We don't like to use the word. Oh. Because they were never slaves. Africans. Yes, but what, what is the term that we use for them? Enslaved. Enslaved, Enslaved Africans. Perfect. Yes, it kind of, uh, I understand where you're coming from, but they imported Africans and they turned them into slave or they enslaved them. They, when you say that they are slaves, it seems as if that Africans were always, you know, 
in a this system of servitude. No, they were free people, but they were enslaved. And you are correct. You are perfectly, perfectly correct that enslaved Africans were imported into the Americas. And the first place would have been Brazil. Continue. Continue, Norman. And the reason why the Caribbean switched to sugar is because they had comp competition from Virginia, mm -hmm. was selling better quality and quantity of tobacco. Yeah. And so what emerged in the society? You're correct. Everything you're saying, correct. But what type of society emerged as a result of the importation of Africans and the production of sugar? What type of society? So a mixed society? A mixed society? Yeah, mixed, yes, we mixed could be used. Somebody, in fact, a historian call it a creolized society. So you're correct. Yes, you're correct. Cameron Brathwaite call it a mixed society, which is a creolized society. That is correct. But it what they what they coined that period was that it was a slave society that existed. Where enslaved Africans were enslaved for a period of time. And what we look at is that we looked at how the Africans worked in the different types of production. It was not only sugar, but what else they also did? Sir, cotton. Cotton, what else? Coffee. Coffee, what else? Cocoa. Cocoa, very good. What else? Logwood. Logwood, what else? Mahogany. Mahogany, excellent. So we know that enslaved people were involved in quite a lot of different production. And so that is when we look at the theme. We look at the theme, Caribbean economy and slavery where we look at the different types of production that the enslaved people were involved in. Now we started a new theme by looking at the resistance and revolt and the different ways in which enslaved people resisted slavery, the different slave laws, how they tried to control the enslaved people. And so where we are now is that we are looking at the different slave revolts. The first slave revolt we look at was? The Haitian Revolution. The Haitian Revolution. And in fact, it was a very, very successful slave revolt. Now we look at the Haitian Revolution. What was the next one that we looked at in Jamaica? Two we looked at in Jamaica. Um, yes, you're correct. What is it? Sir, the Maroon War. Yes. How many Maroon Wars they had? Sir, two. Two. Very good. So we have the Haitian Revolution, which is the first that we look at. Then we look at the First Maroon War, and then we also look at the Second Maroon Maroon War. Now let us look at a timeline. In 1670, we had the, the, the Sugar Revolution. By 1721, we had the First Maroon War. The First Maroon War ended in which year? 1739. 1739, very good. Now, after the first Maroon War, then we are going to, in 1791, what is going to start in 1791? 
Um, no. Was it a war in Haiti, sir? Yes, what we call it. Um, what revolution we call the war in 1791? So the Haitian revolution. The Haitian revolution. And the Haitian revolution ended in which period? Which year? Which year the Asian Revolution ended? Ladies, which year the Haitian Revolution ended? Sir, 1804. 1804, thank you very much. Now, way before the Haitian Revolution, after the first Maroon War, there's going to have another slave revolt in a colony that is called Burbies. So, first Maroon War, Burbies slave revolt, Haitian Revolution. During the Haitian Revolution, you're going to have the second Maroon War in Jamaica, right? After the Second Maroon War in Jamaica, while the Haitian Revolution was taking place, you're going to have the Pedon Rebellion in Grenada, where the Pedon, Julian Pedon, is going to kill the governor of Grenada, the white governor, and take over Grenada. Then after that, you're going to have the Barbados Slave Revolt, which is the Busta Rebellion. Then after that, in 1823, the Demerara Slave Revolt. In 1831, we're going to have the Jamaica Slave Revolt, also called the Christmas Rebellion, or the Sam Sharp Slave Revolt. And then, because of all of the slave revolt that is taking place, they are going to grant people in the enslaved people, their freedom in 1838. So they fought for their freedom. Now, we are not going to look at all of these slave revolts. In fact, we would have already looked at the first Maroon War and the second Maroon War and the Haitian Revolution. Now, what we're going to do for today, we're going to look at the Burbee slave revolt Burbies slave revolt. We're going to look at where is Burbies, the causes of the slave revolt, what happened during the slave revolt, and the effects of the slave revolt. Burbies. Then we are going to go to Barbados, where we are going to look at the slave revolt in Barbados. Same thing. Where is Barbados? Causes of the slave revolt, course of the slave revolt, the events that happened, and the effects. And then tomorrow, we're going to look at the Demerara slave revolt in the colony of Demerara, 1823. And on Wednesday, we're going to look at Jamaica slave revolt in 1831. Now, if we look at it, ladies, Burbies rebellion or the Burbies slave revolt happened in a British colony at the time that was called, uh, in fact, the colony was named Burbies, right? That was the name of the colony. And today, Burbies is located in Guyana. What we, ha what we have today as Guyana is the country Guyana, that is where Burbies is located. In fact, Burbies, Demerara, Demerara slave revolt that we're going to look at is also in Guyana. Now, if we look at, if we look at this map, Guyana is located in South America. 
right? Now, you have several different, all of this area from here to here, all of this region is called the Guyanas. And great powers fought over this region. The French, the Dutch, the English fought over all of this region here, which is the Guyanas, right? Now today, if we look at today, this is Guyana here, which, is, which was also called British Guyana. This is Suriname, which was called Dutch Guyana. And here is French Guyana, which, was, which is still owned by France. So if you look at it, all of this area right here is the Guyana's region. Now, if we look, this area, river right here, is the Burbese River. So right here is the Burbese River. And the colony of Burbese was located here, still is, but it was it wasn't a very big colony. And the colony of Demerara is located here because the Demerara River is here. So Demerara was a separate colony from Burbies. After a time, the British is going to join them together. I just want to give you an idea of what it was like. Not that all of this is important. Well, it's important to give you background information. But it's not that you're going to be tested on it uh, for, I don't, I don't, they will test you on it, but they still need to know. Now in 1627, Abraham Van Peer, a Dutch trader, received permission from the Dutch West India Company to start a colony, to start a colony on the Burbies. River. A few years later, Suriname was settled by Lord Wilbur Will Berry. I, 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 I have a little twist there with pronouncing that name. And Lawrence Hyde under a grant from the English King Charles II. Now, all of this area, all of this area, ladies, were once controlled by the Dutch. All of this area. And then after a period of time, the British is going to come and take a portion, which is this area. The Dutch is going to be left with this piece and the French took this piece. So all of this area was really controlled by the Dutch at first. But countries are gonna come and there are other European countries gonna come and they are gonna fight over this, this, this piece of land. So Burbies at one time was ruled by the Dutch. All right? So between, 1627 and 1796, it was ruled by the Dutch at the time. After a period of time, after 1796, uh, the Burbies was ruled by the British. And then after that, Demerara, which was also ruled by the Dutch, once the British capture Burbies and Demerara, they are going to join these two areas together and they are going to form a new colony, which is called British Guyana, which is today modern day Guyana. So as I said, all of this area was originally owned by the Dutch. The British captured this part, which is 
on this map, which is right here, Barbies. And then also they are going to capture this part, which is Demarara. And so, and, and also they're going to capture all of this area. All of these areas, they're going to capture the British. And so what they're going to do is that they're going to call all of this area British Guyana after 1796. All right. So at the time when the Burbies revolt, when the enslaved people in Burbies had their riot, Burbies was a Dutch colony. It was a Dutch colony in 1790, in 1763, sorry. So in 1763, when the revolt happened, it was a Dutch colony. However, Burbies became a British colony after 1796. Now at the time, Burbies was ruled by a government and the government was called the Burbies Association. And the population at the time was 3,500 white and 5,000 enslaved Africans. No, so there are some key persons in the very key and important persons in the slave revolt, right? The Burby slave revolt. Somebody go ahead for me. Before I go to that, I wanted to read this quote for me. Somebody read this quote for me, please. Blacks pursued their freedom by all means possible. They declared war on the system and fought bloody battles in the process. But slaves' societies were able to persist part, partly because of the complex and pervasive structures of control and regulation. Yes. No. If you look at these ladies, it said that Blacks pursue their freedom by all means possible. And by that, they are going to declare war on the system and they are going to fight, and they fought bloody, bloody battles. And this is one of the slave revolt, the Burby slave revolt, that was also bloody, very, very bloody. Uh, that took place in 1763, and who ruled Burbies at this time? Which British, so which European country? The Dutch. The Dutch. So the Dutch ruled, or what they call the name of the country is the Netherlands or Holland, and the people that live within the Netherlands is called the Dutch. So the new European country that ruled Burbies at this time was the Netherlands. Who? The people from the Netherlands, they are called the Dutch. And so during this time, they had some very important figures, right? So you had Coffey, and his name is spelled several different ways in the history book. Coffey, well, you can see the different pronouns spelling of his name. Sometimes the exam papers have several different spellings of his name. And Coffey was an Akan man, meaning that he came from the Akan tribe in West Africa. He was stolen from West Africa. He, he was brought to the Caribbean to work on the Dutch, on a Dutch plantation in Barbies, right? So that is where coffee was brought. He was brought from the Dutch, from West Africa, to 
the Guyanas, to the Guyanas, and the area that he's going to settle on is Barbies, and that area was controlled by the Dutch. Now, the governor at the time was Governor Bonn, right? I'm not even going to pronounce his last name because I can't pronounce. I, 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 I don't know how to pronounce the, the way I call it now, the Dutch, right? But it could be you hang him, right? He was the Dutch governor of Barbies. Another important person in this rebellion was Atta. So you have Kofi, you have Atta, who was another enslaved person, and you have Accra, which is another enslaved person. And the neighboring colony here was Governor Storm. And Governor Storm was the governor of Demerara. So Burbies had a governor, Demerara had a governor, and Esquebo, which is right here, also had their own governor. There were three separate colonies. Just like how you have Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, just like how you have New York, Miami, about New York, Miami, New York, Florida, and Virginia. Those are three separate colonies on the US mainland. These are three separate colonies on the, in the South American continent of the Guyanas. Now, what were some of the causes of the, the slave revolt? All the different slave revolts had the very same causes. One of them, the desire for freedom. Every single slave revolt, if you should go into an exam and they ask you, what are the, to discuss the causes or to explain the causes of the Barbados slave revolt or the Haitian revolution or the Jamaica slave revolt. For every single slave revolt, a reason why the enslaved people, they are going to rebel against the system is because they desired freedom. And you're going to explain why they desire freedom, right? Now, one of the examples where the enslaved people in Burbies, I shouldn't use this example because this was under British rule when Burbies was under British rule, but it is one example where people's freedom were controlled, their physical control. Somebody read this for me in the book from here. Come, somebody, please volunteer. Hello. Um, in the book, here in the book. In the book, a documentary okay. of slavery in Gerbais, the assembly made the same proclam proclamation concerning slaves walking late at night two times in less than two years. This revealed that slave laws were sometimes undermined. Very good. So there was a rule in Burbies. It's not Burbies, it's Burbies. Thank you very much. Burbies that enslaved people should not walk late at night, but the enslaved people still walk late at night. The enslaved people wanted their freedom. They wanted their freedom. And so if we look at this right here, the first thing that we know is that the enslaved people desired their freedom. 
One other example that they desired the freedom was that Coffey, who was an enslaved person, who is considered the leader of the rebellion, he said that, listen, he wanted freedom. How did he express that he wanted freedom? Coffey wrote letters to the governor stating that he wanted his freedom. Or the principal objective of the revolt was to get his freedom. So you can see here from the letters that Coffey wrote that freedom was a reason for slave revolt. Another reason for the slave revolt was because of the harsh treatments uh, during slavery. And we know the different harsh treatments that the enslaved people would have received. Another historian said another reason why enslaved people revolt was because they were underfed. In fact, the history books said that in Burbies at the time, they did not have enough food to feed the enslaved people. So the enslaved people were malnourished. And so if we are going to follow Richard Sheridan on this, where he said that slave, enslaved people resisted because they were overworked and underfed and that produced frustration. Therefore, we can also argue that another cause of the enslaved the slave revolt in Barbies was because the enslaved people were underfed. They were hungry. They were malnourished. All right? So the first cause, what was the first cause of the Barbies slave revolt? The desire to be free. How do we know that they wanted the freedom? What example we have? Sir Coffey wrote, Coffey, sorry, wrote a letter to the Dutch governor stating that he wanted to be free. Perfect. What other evidence we have from this about freedom? Were they, what about the enslaved people? So the fact that they were defying the laws? Yes. So the mere fact that they broke the different laws that were there, it signified that they were asserting their freedom, a freedom that they knew where. Sir, before they were taken into captivity. Very good. Excellent. So with the first one is desire for freedom. What's the second reason now? The second reason caused for this verbi slave revolt. Harsh treatment or underfed. The? The role of diseases? No, you're oh, correct. The harsh treatment. The harsh treatment. Yes, the harsh treatment under slavery. And you need to talk about all the different harsh treatments that enslaved people went through under slavery. And what was the third reason for the slave for slave revolt? What is the third cause of a slave revolt? They were underfed. Hmm? Underfed. What they said about what how do we have evidence that enslaved people were underfed? What what happened? They were, they were malnourished. They were malnourished. Very good. And they, uh, just a small amount of food were actually imported into Burbies. And so the planters had little or no food to give to the enslaved people. So one cause, freedom, the desire for freedom. Second cause, harsh treatment. Third cause, they were underfed. The fourth cause of the enslaved, uh, of the Burby slave revolt, 
was the presence of the Akan people. In fact, this historian, Madam uh, Monica Schusler, she said that slave revolt because of the presence of a certain type of slaves from the Akan or the Gold Coast. Now let us look at some of these persons. The three main leaders of the slave revolt were Kofi, Accra, and Atta. All three of them were born in Africa and they were from the Akan tribe. In fact, most of the persons who revolt in Haiti or Sandama were actually from the Akan tribe. Nani was also from the Akan tribe. Kuju, Kwako were also from the Akan tribe. So if we're gonna follow what this historian here is saying is that anywhere you see slave revolt taking place, in the Caribbean, you always have to look for one. They were actually born in Africa and they were actually from the Akan tribe. So that was another. So she said the reason for this slave revolt in Burbies or this reason for slave revolt right across was the presence of the Akan people. Another reason for the slave revolt was the role of diseases. And diseases played a very important role. All right? Somebody volunteer to read this for me, please. Let us look at the role of diseases. As, the, as governor of the colony, Van Hugenheim wrote that the situation in Burbis, Bur Burbis or Burbis? Burbis. Burbis was still very bad. The prevailing diseases, probably dysentery, raged worse than ever before and had already claimed the lives of two of the council members, Emmanuel Hosh and Charbon. All right, stop there for me. Now, if you look at this the governor is saying that listen another reason was because that century was another which was at this was very very popular it was prevailing in Barbies and if the planters are dying from it the leaders in the country the soldiers are dying a lot of the soldiers died from it in fact, if you look at it, it said right here that he further noted that except for 10 men, all soldiers at the fort had passed away or were ill. What is the role? The mere fact that soldiers were dying from the disease, the dysentery disease, what that gave the enslaved people, what opportunity that gave the enslaved people? There a chance to um, uprise? Yes. You get a chance because the soldiers are sick. If you're sick, you cannot fight. Because a disease was actually spreading. A lot of people dying from it. A lot of the whites dying from it. So it gave them an opportunity to say, yes, people sick now. We can revolt. We can fight for freedom. Perfect time to fight for a revolt. And so this show that diseases also played a very important role in the enslaved people using that opportunity to fight for their freedom. Now let us look at the events that actually took place. So they are gonna start to fight now. They're going to start to fight for their freedom. Davis, you're with me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So you're going, to, Davis, read this first point. 
Nature or course of the rebellion. The revolts began on plantation Magdalenburg on the Kanhe Kanye River on February 23rd, 1763. Within two weeks after rebels joined the revolt, they moved from one plantation to the other, murdering some whites, imprisoning others, and driving away refugees. Very good, very good. So it started on the plantation on February the 23rd, and the revolt, the, the rebels, are the ent I don't like to use the word re rebels. They were not rebels, they were enslaved Africans fighting for their freedom. And the enslaved Africans went from plantation to plantation, murdering the whites and imprisoning others. Yes, they put a lot of the white people in prison. Yes, that's one of the, how the end the, the revolt started. Now continue for me. Let us see what happened. So it was in February. Two weeks they spent moving from plantation to plantation, freeing the enslaved. March 1763. Davis, continue. By March 1763, the revolt had spread to the Burabees River. The enslaved peoples were able to capture several plantations along the river and coffee played an instrument role in this area. Yes, so it played a very, so coffee is going to play a very instrumental role in this. So now they are taking over the plantation, capturing the plantations. And so they're going and kill, take over. Kill, take over. Right? Big war taking place. Thank you very much. James, Bianca, you're here? Yes, sir. Read the other events that happened. We're still in March. March 1763. March 1763, Coffee nominates himself governor of Burbies and elects Accra as second in command. Very good. So at this time, after they go, after they go and they take over the plantations, kill whites and all of these different stuff, Coffee is going to say, listen now, I am the governor of Burbies. You see all of these plantations that I captured and all of these play, the, 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 the whites have to be running away. The soldiers are sick. I am now the new governor of Burbies. And he's going to elect Accra as his second in command. Now, what is going to happen? April 1763. Go ahead, Kwame Bianca. April 1763, European troops obtained help from Native Indians. All right, so they are going to get the Native Indians. What is your view on this? Where, we, where else we saw where the European views at suppressed group to fight against the enslaved blacks. Which group in Jamaica that they the use? The Maroons. The Maroons. Can you imagine the native Indians that went through a hard period of uh, what we call that system? It starts with E. Encomienda system. The encomienda system. They went through the encomienda system. And can you imagine that they went through the encomienda system and they now assist the European troops to fight against coffee and Accra and other enslaved people. Not only the European troops but they're going to get troops from Britain, right? From the British troops to come in 
and they are going to fight. So between July to November, the Indians and the Europeans are now going to attack the enslaved people. Let us see what is going to take place now. War is taking place right across Barbies. The Coffee and his, his army, they control a section of the territory. Bianca? This yes. Here. Coffee wrote letters to the Dutch governor asking him to recognize the division of the Barbies. Hey. Look at this. Perfecto. Coffee not just sit down there and said, listen, I am just going to accept any and anything. He wrote to the Dutch governor and he said to the Dutch governor that since we captured this part of the territory, you need to recognize our independence and our freedom and over here we belong to us and over there belong to you. Let us read what the governor is going to say. Continue here for me, Bianca. Governor noted that he would send letters of request to Holland for the king to decide. All right. So he said that he said, well, copy, I cannot give you that permission, but the king in England have to make that decision. But every time there is success, there is division. Let us read. Read what happened here. Internal, Internal conflict, conflict developed between Kofi and Atta. Atta declared himself governor. During the struggle between Kofi and Atta, many of the Kofi supporters were killed. And if they turn against if coffee turn against Atta, then clearly the British and the Dutch and the Indians had an opportunity to come in to take over. All right. Continue for me, Bianca. Coffee committed suicide. Akra Coffee second was captured by Atta. He later ran away and and gave the Dutch information on the hiding places of the rebels. November six, November seventeen sixty three, European tr troops arrived. December seventeen sixty three, more troops arrived. Rebellion suppressed. Suppressed. No, you look at this, ladies. Who caused the rebellion to fail? Who failed the rebellion? Who failed this rebellion, ladies? Was it the Indians? Was it the British troops? Was it the internal conflict? Was it the fact that Akka ran away Sir, was and gave them information? Go ahead for me, William. It was the internal conflict. I would say that the internal conflict played a major role because if we look at it, they had control. But every time you have a little kingdom, everybody wants to be leader. Nobody wants to support the leader. And if Coffee said that he's the leader and he has been playing that role. Where Atta come from to say that he wants to rule? Till Coffee say, I can't bother with this then. Coffee kill, his, kill himself. And then Atta now fearful of Atta, run away and go and tell the Dutch everything. So if you look at the reason, thank you very much, Bianca. The reason for the suppression or the reason it failed, the Burby slave revolt failed, was because of the disunity among the enslaved people. At, at, Atta versus Coffee. Then we had Accra that went and gave information. 
The Indians also played a role. And the mere fact that the Dutch had superior weapons and they got help from neighboring colonies like the British also helped with the suppression, kicking down. And so the enslaved people had to surrender. They had no choice but to surrender because of what was going on. Now, once they surrender, the first thing that they're going to do is that the governor is going to order martial court. He's going to order that kill them. So he's going to imprison them, some of them. Some going to be tried, some going to be put to death. Some is going to be flogged, right? The disagreement brought a lot of problems in it. And the governor would have utilized that to his, his the best of his ability. And also the role of the Indians. We spoke about the role of the Indians. Now, what were some of the effects? effects of the, the slave revolt. Some of the negative effects of the slave revolt is that one, you had economic disruption because if all the enslaved people are, they burned on the plantation, nobody's gonna work on the plantation. So buildings are destroyed, crops destroyed, animals destroyed, the debt are going to increase serious economic disruption, social disruption. Over half of the enslaved population was actually killed during the slave revolt. More than half the white population was killed. Most of the white people fled the, fled the colony, right? Because they were fearful. And after that, the whites were very, very fearful of black. Very, very fearful. In fact, some of them returned to, 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 to the Netherlands and they never returned because they were fearful. But not only that, another effect was that in order to put the enslaved people back in under control, you are going to increase their increase the control over them, tighter control and restriction. And they are going to get more troops to come into the colony. So these were some of the effects, all right? So if we look at it, ladies, economic disruption, the economy is going to destroy. You explain why the economy destroy, social effects, Talk about the death and the trauma that is going to cause as a result of people being killed. And there's going to be increased punishment. And the truth and in fact, the enslaved people did not get their freedom. And I believe one of the major reasons for this was because of the disunity. The disunity was a reason. Somebody read this slide for me. On October 19, 1763, Governor Van Hugenheim was told by a mulatto who had fled from the rebels that there was a lot of disagreement there. Coffee, leader of the rebels, had been overthrown by a certain Atta who had subsequently appointed himself governor of the rebels. Upon this defeat, Coffee had committed suicide. All right. So we are seeing, and for me, if you are going to rank it, why the revolt uh, was suppressed, or why the revolt failed, what, which, which, which one would you rank at the top? Sir, this unity. This unity. All right, which one do you think would come second? Is it the role of the Indians or the help from the neighboring colonies? Well, 
role of the Indians, it depends on you. If there's no right answer, you could say that the reason why the revolt ended is because of the use execution. They went and they killed a lot of people. Somebody read from here for me, please, on March 2nd. On March 2nd, 100 of the over 800 rebels taken into custody has been sent to the Daybreak Plantation for trial. The members of the court examined the rebels from March 2nd till 14th. Of the 101 who were on trial, 53 were sentenced to death, 1 to a flogging, and 47 were acquitted. Of the 53 sentenced to death, 15 were burnt, burnt alive, 16 were broken on the wheel and 22 were hung by the neck. All right, thank you very much. Now, if you see that they burn, how much, how much they burn? 15 persons were burnt alive, 16 were broke, necks were broken, 22 necks were broken, right? In my question to you, if you see that type of punishment, you're not going to want to rebel ever again. It is going to force you to accept the system of slavery. And all of this did not happen in secret. It was publicly done in front of everybody. And so if we look at this, ladies, right here, we are looking at the We'd have just looked at the Burbese slave revolt. Now, it is now two minutes past 10. You don't have to leave. And I, I'm not encouraging you to leave, but you're going to take 10 minutes break. And we're going to return at 2.20 when, when we are going to continue to look at the Barbados slave revolt. All right, ladies?